Wow, that was absolutely fantastic. I'll never get sick of that. The Rhythm School of Indian Music. Not quite the Onion Bhaji experience, but whoo-wee, what a lot of fun. Over to you, Jeremy. Thanks, Jace. Good evening and welcome to the Late Night Big Breakfast, New Zealand's award-winning Late Night Breakfast show here from Target Furniture. They're actually live from the Vivo couch. It certainly is. These Vivos are going out like hotcakes at the moment. So if you, if you want one of the Vivo They're organic. Couches, lead, they're organic. They they actually, we should actually warn the punters, but because of it, it's on television, it makes the couches look 10% bigger than they actually are. So a lot of people are actually getting the Vivo couch and going, oh, it's a bit smaller than I thought. <laughs> I wonder if it's making me look 10% bigger as well, which well, that's is right. probably more yeah. of an issue at this stage because they are quite a small couch. But yeah. um, what a great show we've got today. I tell you right now, out on the car park, we've got our man on the ground, Guy Montgomery, standing by with a dog, and he's going to be doing a little piece on him shortly. We'll be over to you guys shortly. Just hang in there. Um, Jeremy, what a week it's been. I don't really want to comment on that, so I'll go to you, Jace. Sure. Um, what's happening on the show today? Oh, so much. And, you know, you're going to be on the edge of your seat, so I can promise you that. But let's check in with Lee in Bookshelves. Does this go with this? Welcome to the show, welcome to Book Shelves with Joe and myself. I'm going to chuck some names at you. Yeah. Auden. Wonderful poet. Larkin. Wonderful poet. I, I know I know they've both inspired you and they've also inspired me. And this is a little poem I've come up with. Oh, yeah. well, uh, what what uh, Auden poems do you like? Well, this is more Larkin-esque. But um, time is money, so I'll, I'll get on to okay. this. Yeah, good, good. Hark! So, have you started? Hark, that's the first, that's the first line. Hark. Hark! I heareth the light, no longer cometh. Sorry, I, I, I heareth. The light, no I longer heareth, cometh. I heareth, I heareth. Yes. Why do you say I heareth? Well, I've seen it. I've seen the light no yeah, longer yeah, cometh. Why the eth? Why the E-T-H? You'd never say that normally out on the street here. I well, wouldn't normally say hark either, but I just did no, then. No, so. but you might. I mean, hark does make some sort of sense. This makes no grammatical sense. Not to most Shall people. we move on? OK. Hark, I heareth the light no longer cometh. No longer it cometh. Like the last effervescent carbonated bubble in a cup of, of dancing wine. It's not uh, carbonated. It would be if I wrecked it in the soda stream, Joe. Okay. Right. Yea, no longer it cometh like the forgotten woolly mammoth, for he too no longer dances in the frozen. Shouldn't that be danceth? 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 Yeah. Well, the point well everything is... else is eth. But, but mammoths don't really dance anyway, I'm just a no, more I'm just, I'm just concerned about the grammar that, that you seem to have this notion that vaguely 16th century um, diction is required in order to write poetry. When it get to, to the end, Joe, I think it'll be quite clear why I've done that. Oh, really? Okay. okay. I'll remind you of that. Yea, no longer it cometh, like the forgotten woolly mammoth, for he too no longer dances frozen in the frigid permafrost of winter's discontent. Right. That's a line I've borrowed from someone. Yeah. Okay. Where are you, oh? Forgotten. Where, where are you what? Where are you, O? Oh. O. Oh. How do you spell O? Oh. Ye O. Oh. How do you spell O? Oh. Just O. Oh. Oh. Just an O. Oh, I see. Right. O. Oh, yeah. With, yeah. The, you know, with like a little things on it. Oh. Where are you, O? Oh? Forgotten sun, beam of light. You no longer lighteth the light that shines through gossamer like fragility. You no longer lighteth lights. the light. Someone needs to light it, Joe. Right. Okay. Lives that you drift easily back and forth, like the solitary five northern winds. The solitary five northern winds. Well, you can have different winds coming from the north. No, you there's the only one wind comes from the north, and that's a northern wind, isn't it? Or a nor'wester or a nor'easter, they're coming well, from... Well, they're the... nor'westers or nor'easters, they're not northerlies, are they? Well, in general terms, it's a northern okay, wind. OK, well, so what are the other two, nor nor'easters and nor nor'westers? The five northerly winds? Where'd you get five from? I could change that if I had to, Joe. You could, I, I think you should. OK, all right. But once ageth, we... Is this in English? Cursed, nay destined to glide with the grace and sorrow of a ranch lighter that's come off its tracks. Death, thump, and a decaying blackbird lies motionless on the deck. So, we've got this ranch lighter that's come off its rails. Not completely, it's just enough that it's annoying, you can't yeah, actually... Yeah, no, I recognise that. Know, I think that's, that's a good image, yeah. So you have to kind of lift it. And, and kind of... then, and then a, a thump was when it hit the window. Uh, thud. Thud, sorry. Um, and it's already decaying? It's very fast, isn't it? No, no, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean this is, again, it's a metaphor for death. Um, perhaps that's why he flew into the window in the first place, because he was decaying. Well, a decaying... Well, mentally. 
mentally decaying blackbird. Yeah, well, do, basically, do, I mean, a lot of people, when they get senile, men they're mentally they're, they're decaying like a blackbird. And if they could, they would probably run into a ranch slide. Thanks for watching Bookshelves with Joe and myself. See you next time. You want we got it! Well, welcome back to Bar Stools and Kitchen Seating, and you want it, we've got it. Forget to trade me and all that palaver. Go on our Facebook page to look at the fantastic items that we've got on sale here. Lee, what are we going to start with with you, mate? Yeah, thanks, Jas. What I'm going to start with today is the classic oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Brother printer, the DCP range, obviously, mm. 540 CN, mm. and um, not just any other printer. It's a classic, one of the first top-loading and side-loading printers. So at least there's a big setup in the DCP range where it went from the 520 to yeah, the 540, right, and this is the CN, and the CN is really like the, uh, it's the limited edition. Well, it's a bit like, you know, if I could use a car comparison, but I mean, Henry Ford went from the, mm. the Model T to the Model A kind of thing. It's yeah, a real yeah. transitional mm. period in Brother printers. Um, um, unfortunately, I don't have the original power cable that goes with it, but the printer alone is in excellent condition. And, Does it have um, cartridges in it at the moment? Or you is can't that get them anymore for that. Oh, okay. no longer, no, right. the, the, the cartridges are no longer available. Right. But mm. as I say, uh, an item like this, you probably best, you probably just prefer to leave it probably in your man cave, mm -hmm. in, in your house somewhere, on display. Visual, um, visual and Right ornament. It's, it's a visual right thing. You know, it's mm -hmm. a classic. I'm going to put a value roughly, perhaps, Jace. Fifteen hundred dollars, perhaps, round, round there. Um, fantastic, Jeremy. What do you got? Well, um, fellas, today I've got uh, three items actually, but they come together as a hotel package. I like to bundle it up. This is the Manuka Spa Green Tea Manuka Extract Hydrating Body Balm, which also comes with the Manuka Spa Green Tea Manuka Extract oh, the, Nourishing the Conditioner. conditioner. Mm, right. um, and on top of that as well, I'm is uh, this. Room key to uh, room 708 at the Scenic Hotel in, uh, in Dunedin, actually. Um, this key should still work. Yep. Um, I can't guarantee that, of course, but it... it well, I've got a question. Well, one would hope. Mm. Can you use that key, the 708 key, in any Scenic Hotel in the country? I believe you can. You can. Fantastic. Well, well that, basically... That's got to add value right there. Mm. Yep. Yeah. And obviously it's unlimited stay. Um, you're not putting a night on it, one no, night, two no, nights. No, no. As long as you can get away with it, basically. That's, that's the idea. As long as you can stay there, you can get in. And out. Um, I mean, I wouldn't want to let this go for anything less than, I mean, eight, eight ninety, nine hundred dollars, something like that. That's cheap enough, probably. Yeah, that's at least. Fantastic. Great. Right. Yeah. Jace, what do you got today? Well, you know, Lee, what price of life, I have to ask. It's a dangerous old world that we live in. And I have this here uh, genuine, authentic life clip. Uh, still in its original packaging, as you can see. Now, if you're going for a bush walk, uh, you're overseas somewhere, uh, you're going for an ocean walk, anywhere where there's mm. an inherent danger, all you need to do is clip this life clip onto your belt buckle, and there's a flashing light. So if you get lost, you just need to push the button there, and it actually starts flashing. And if there's an overhead plane, perhaps a, a vessel going by, a helicopter even, if you're in the bush, mm. they may just see. It's not a great big light. It's just like an indicator more than anything yeah, else. It's, more, it's very more. useful, though. Unfortunately, one of the reasons we're giving it away, we couldn't actually find the battery for this particular type of model. So, uh, you know, in terms of a price, Lee, as I said at the beginning, what price of life? Mm. 970, 975 will start at the Alerts. Fantastic. So let's sum up. Whoa! Go to Facebook and tell us why you want these amazing items. You want we got it! Coming up later in the show, we'll talk to Guy Montgomery, who's in the car park with a dog. We'll try to find a new home for Martin the Ginger Cat. And you ask Fruit New Zealand a brand new speed cookie. Our next guest probably doesn't need an introduction, but I'll give her one anyway. She's part of an iconic New Zealand institution that's been around for donkey's years. In fact, you could probably say they've looked after a few donkeys in their time. It's a big welcome to Chelsea Vigin from the SPCA and her very handsome ginger tab, Martin. Welcome, Chelsea. Thank you. Um, Chelsea, tell us a bit about the organisation, SPCA New Zealand, a fantastic organisation. Mm. What sort of work are you doing day to day? Um, I think there's so many different groups that do it day to day. Some of our groups are working with the animals to adopt them out. Some yeah. of us are down in the hospital. And has mm. Martin uh, got all of his uh, faculties? He is complete? Um, no, he doesn't because Martin is up for adoption and we do sex all the animals that go through the SPCA. 
because they do tend to breed like rabbits, really, cats, don't yes. they? Um, Jayce, you've, you've got children now. You've been technically fixed. Desexed. 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 Um, has that affected your behaviour? Well, it's interesting, I mean, because we're all animals at the end of the day, mm -hmm. aren't we? Um, you know, our, our mission, if you like, in life is to recreate and to reseed the world. So do I, cat's noise, it was, Martin was looking at me. Um, you know, once that's kind of removed and the urgency of that is taken away, certainly I've noticed that, that I am a lot calmer, um, that I do have periods of, of real tranquility, which I didn't have before. And the real bonus was I stopped rubbing myself against the furniture. That's a good thing, Jay, especially now that you're doing a TV show and a, and a furniture store. Certainly. Chelsea, Martin certainly is a good-looking feline, isn't he? Thank you. He certainly is, Jeremy, and he's been on TV before, hasn't he? He has. He has been on TV before. He has. And he's up for adoption, technically. He is. But just now, we're going to cut out live to Guy Montgomery. He's in the car park uh, with, a, with a beagle, with a, with a dog. Um, Guy, come in. What you got? What's going on there, Guy? Oh, just to clarify with you, Lee, uh, that, that, that wasn't my beagle. That belonged to a, to a family who had to take the take the dog home. So I think what we'll do is we'll just go straight back to you in the studio. Uh, okay, so what, what, what are you just doing holding up? A... Oh, this is just, uh, it's the, the big lad to go. It's just a little bag of dog poo. You're holding a bag of poos? Okay. Well, well yeah, but... This is I look, just... I'm, not, I'm not sure how much TV you've made, but standing in a car park with a plastic bag full of poos does not make good TV, you know what I'm this, saying? This is why I'm trying to move the shot. Back to you in the studio, Lee. Thank you. You've done a lot of TV, Jeremy. You've never just done a, a live link with, with a bag of poos, have you? Not that I'm aware of. I didn't think so. Oh, easy on, fella. There you go, he's having a bit of a moment. Martin, he's maybe I'm um, having a, a reaction to the Scotch Guard. Scotch As I say, the, the Viva Lounge Suite there, shows he just got Scotch Guarded this morning. Um, if you could get one message out there to New Zealand about the SPCA, about animals, what would it be? Um, have them desexed, and when you get one, make sure that you plan on keeping it for the next 10 years. Fantastic. Chelsea, it's been fantastic having you on the show. Um, do come back and see us again. Thank you very much. Um, with Martin, well, hopefully Martin will be finding exactly. a home in the meantime. Exactly. Get in touch with the SPCA. Look at the good work they're doing. Uh, any final words, Jimmy? No. OK. Jace? Let's go into the kitchen and see what's happening. Hi. I didn't see you there. Welcome to Speed Cooking. What are we cooking? Well, I'll tell you. Today, we're going to cook quiche Lorraine. Oh, fuck. With the difference, though, we're going to fatten it up with a bit of chicken and some pasta. But as always, you got to kick off with some utensils. <laughs> That's great. I'm going to use those utensils to help get that pasta going. Here's what I've done earlier. I don't know I needed that. That's nice and thick. It's going to help with the paste here. That's fantastic. We need to get the blender going. Here's what I had earlier. Gotta get some milk in there. That's not enough for me. Get it. Kind of bring it all in. Use what you have. See if you get that pace you're going. You're going to need some eggs. I normally use a dozen, but why not 24? Uh, don't worry about mixing those yolks and wine stuff. We'll separate them later. I use a bit of a roller here. You really got to start rolling it in. What you can actually do is take that off. We've got the proper blender unit on it. Really got to get it in there. Okay, time to thicken up that pastry. Get a bit of flour here, back that up. Bit of flour going on there, bit of flour. Nothing panic about, of course. This is normal, happens to spaghetti all the time. Now we've got this really good opportunity to try and thicken up our jus. Just a matter of getting it in there. Okay, cut those chickens. It needs the frosting, needs to go in the microwave, whack it in. That chicken's the frosting. This is number seven. It'd be a lot better if it's number nine. Easy to don't use. Just pump it up a little bit. Just get the extended there. You whack it on there. You whack it on there. Just put it. Now we need to cook it up a little bit. Whack it on there. I've got two hands. Oh, shit. Thanks, mate. You whack it on there. Once again, use your traditional fire method. A bit of a searing going on here. Get it nice and toasty. We're going to need foil and a lot of it. We're going to use a bit of a camp oven. We, we kind of make a bit of a boo boo, bit of an oven there. Don't need that, Adam. All right. 
Let those juices come through, and that should be fantastic. Just give it a moment. Should be about right. Should be nice and rested now. Should be beautiful. Whack it in there. Take out your more oven. Bring it out. Let's see what we got. Well, there you have it. A fantastic quiche Lorraine. It's so easy when you know how. Hey, back to us in the studio. Fantastic. Well, unfortunately, the Onion Baji experience have been caught up in a taxi strike at Auckland Airport. So instead, we've got the Rhythm School of Indian Music. Hey, welcome back to the Late Night Big Breakfast. Mm. Great to have you with us. Um, just on a personal note, I'd like to dedicate this part of the show, or indeed the episode if I could, to my great uncle Hang, who um, passed away on Tuesday. Um, he was surrounded by family, friends, and fire as it happened. It was a um, celebration turned around year. You don't wear flammable rubber crocs at a at a hungi, and he combusted mid hungi, and uh, he's no longer with us. But if I could just dedicate this, this episode to him, that, that'd be fantastic, fellas. Well, I know it. you Thank were you. very close with him, and you. Well, I hardly knew him, yeah. but I kind of digressed here slightly. Mm. Uh, we're talking about computers today. We're talking about the internet, all things. Where the hell's it going in the future? It's moving very fast, and someone who knows all about this stuff is Lance Wiggs. Lance, Twitter, mm -hmm. Facebook, social media. What's the next big thing? Good question. I, I guess if I had to answer that, I'd say it's things like Snapchat and other programs where it's very ethereal, where okay. you do something, you look at it, and it goes away forever. Yep. Because now we're like... Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. And to be fair, if you put anything on a computer, it's fair game. Mm. Yeah. You know, I, I had an incident a couple of couple of years ago, and you, you should probably remember, how do I put it delicately? Um, well, I ended up having a, a threesome, I suppose you'd say, in, in, um, in Huntley. And that got leaked to the media. Being in Huntley, it is quite embarrassing. No, no. How did it actually? How did it actually get leaked, though? Why well, I leaked it? 
I wouldn't have a threesome. Why wouldn't you? I mean, I mean, so oh, right. I, I actually leak that, and there's a hell of a kerfuffle after but that. So, so that mm. is actually quite illegal. So you have, without their consent, leaked pictures of. Um, I didn't actually leak the pictures. Right. I just told everyone that that it right. happened. If you know what I mean. Right. right. Um, left more there, you know, to the imagination yeah. kind of thing. It's kind of right. It's a, so you didn't that. know if it was a you know a boy and a boy. Or a boy and a girl, or two guys and a girl. I don't really just... want. I don't really want to go there and, right. and, okay. and let the kid out of the bag there. But yeah. you know, I don't think the other two guys would be appreciating me talking about it. But look, I might just interrupt there, Jace, and do an infomercial. Lee, can I just interrupt you there for a second? I'd like to do an infomercial too. There you go. Thank you. Tampel is a comfortable tampon. It has a plastic applicator instead of cardboard, and I think that's important. No tampon can beat Tampel for protection and comfort, and that's good to know. And thanks to polymer technology from NASA, now you can swim, play tennis, go out for dinner, or even snow ski with total confidence. Take one for the team with Tampel Tampons. Thank you. Um, Lance, if we can bring it back to, back to, back to computers. Um, a phone, by the way, a phone is a computer now. Yep. A tablet is a yep. computer. We, we're just using that the word computer as kind of more. I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to bring that up myself here, but you've brought it up, so I don't need to now. Uh, thanks, Lance. Really appreciate it. Um, your early stuff was certainly was certainly better, but um, we, we do appreciate it all the same. Thanks very much for tuning in to the Late Night Big Breakfast. We'll see you next week. Well, that's the end of the show. This episode was brought to you by Tampal Tampons, giving you the freedom to live life the way you want to live it. Hey, Josh. Josh, yes. Josh. Hey, yeah. um, any numbers in yet? Uh, yep, we've got um, 16. 16,000? 16, no, 16. Six, 16 people watching the show? No, 16 Viva Lounge. Oh, okay, yeah, right, they're going okay. out the door. Oh, fantastic. And that's obviously yeah. including the Ottomans? No, that's, no, that doesn't count the Ottomans. I knew this was going to happen. So, look, just because the Ottomans aren't part of the Viva suite, a lot of people are taking them, so I think we should be getting that sale as well. That's a different code. That's a different code. That's an Ottoman code. And that's different. what they said, is it? Well, yeah, I've got to answer, I've got to, answer to a well, lot of people. It's a pretty easy system to just add it on at the end, you know what I mean? Well, just it's a different code. They've coded it differently. Look, I know you've made a lot of TV, Josh, and, and a lot of it's been fantastic, but for now, uh, you're selling furniture, okay? So just, just uh, hold that thought. As well as... That's... If you break that, that's a buy... Are you buying that? Thanks again, you beautiful people. Hey, stay classy, New Zealand. Thank you, New Zealand On Air.